You bet, Kenny. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. Uh, it's great to see everybody. It's been a while so, since we've been together. Uh, it's honestly been a while since uh, our staff's been together as well. Uh, we're doing this, uh, I think, three times a week. We have one later on this afternoon as a staff, and then offense and defense, they meet uh, pretty much every day, and then I pop in and out. So uh, it's been fun to, to see our staff, and, and I know they're working hard. I know our players are working hard. It's uh, obviously unprecedented times, but uh, it's becoming uh, a, a new normal, and everybody's kind of getting into a routine. I'm into a routine, even though every day is a little different, and uh, um, we're very – optimistic that we're going to play football this year. We just don't know when. And so we just got to make sure that we are ready as a staff to go at any time and make sure our players are ready as well. So we'll open it up. Hey coach, it's Matt Hall. Um, I don't want to make you single out any player. I'm sure tons of guys have been great in this time, but have there been any new players uh, or different names than you would have expected that have kind of stepped up and shown you leadership in this unique circumstance? A, a guy that probably just doesn't get mentioned a whole lot uh, is Brock Monty. I think Brock does a, a phenomenal job of, of leading and, and setting things out there and, and calling teammates. And uh, probably Noah Johnson would be the other one. You know, the, the Wyatts and Skylers are always doing that and Joaquin and stuff. But to probably Noah and, um, and Brock. We'll go uh, Frischen and then Mick. <laughs> Sorry, still trying to get used to this. Um, well, what has been your message to the team? It, it, talking with Elijah and Wyatt in the last couple of days, they, they said that you guys are able to meet as an entire team. I'm just curious what your overall theme and message is to the guys. Well, we hit, we hit every area that we need to hit in a team meeting. You know, it gives us a chance for uh, our academic counselors to visit with them, our, our strength and conditioning staff. Um, our nutrition staff, uh, Mindy and Matt in athletic training. Uh, I, I just keep trying to impress upon the guys of, of over communicating with each other and uh, reach out to each other. Not every day is a great day. I know it. I, I know there's some struggles to get up in the morning and do stuff by yourself uh, to reach out to teammates, reach out not only to the leaders on your side of the ball, but reach out to somebody on the other side of the ball that you have a ton of respect for and say, Hey, how are you handling this? Help me out today. I'm struggling. And, and so I think our communication as a whole um, has been challenged, but I think it's been, it's been, I've been really pleased with our response from our guys. And if I could just follow up, you know, every day is a new day, but what are maybe some of the pressing questions in your mind as you follow along the developments regarding COVID-19 and just the way of American life? Oh, just following all the orders, especially what our governors are saying. Um, you know, I know they came out with something last night with a couple of different phases uh, to maybe come back to some normalcy. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe Kansas is one of those states that can get to uh, a phase one a little bit quicker. Um, but, you know, I try not to look too far ahead. And I don't want to look too far ahead because I don't want somebody to determine what we're going to do in September on April 17th. You know, I, I still think there's so much time and, and so much that we don't know uh, that uh, I want to I want to remain optimistic but remain patient. Coach A. Mick Schaefer, 41 Action News in, in Kansas City. I know missing this time is big for a lot of positions, say your offensive line, where you're going to be looking for a lot of new starters. Um, just wondering, though, how big of a perk is it having a quarterback returning if you are going to miss most of spring ball if you are going to miss chunks say of summer ball and and maybe have to ramp up to this thing rather quickly how much of a perk is it having Skyler back a guy that started for multiple years really important uh that that has been really important because I know from a leadership standpoint he's reaching out to everybody on that side of the ball uh, and, and visiting with our skill guys and, and continuing to watch film with those guys, continuing to challenge those guys to, to stay in the playbook, continuing to challenge them to watch whether it be an early non-conference opponent uh, or an early conference opponent. Uh, without a doubt, not having this, this spring with the offensive line, it's probably been more challenging for Coach Riley. You know, he uses he utilizes his, uh, his meeting time that he does get for the NCAA uh, to the fullest to make sure that uh, – uh, those guys are just understanding it, and it's never as easy when you're learning on the grass. But uh, um, I know that uh, Rouse is doing a good job with those guys. 
We'll go to uh, Kurtz and then Harold. Yeah, hey, Coach, good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Um, how, how much do you have to prepare to, I guess, maybe dumb things down, for lack of a better word, on offense and defense, what you're trying to install, just knowing that you, you won't have as much time and you won't have the spring? Yeah, we've talked about that extensively on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, to mix question, I think having a quarterback back allows you to probably be uh, a little more complex. Um, but how much can the old line handle? I, I just think having Skyler back with the communication that he has with a lot of wide receivers and tight ends that will be available that have played will help us. Uh, I've talked to Coach Klanerman. We're, we're not changing wholesale on defense. We are tweaking some things that Joe just feels more comfortable with. Um, but the kids wouldn't know it. The general fan wouldn't know it. We'll still look the same. Uh, but we have talked to those guys, you know, where – whether it's a new city, you know, where, where Denzel was at or uh, a new somebody on the defensive line, we have to make sure that uh, our guys can, can play fast. And so probably defensively will be a little bit simpler to start. Hey, Coach. Uh, Harold from Fox 4. How you doing? Hope your uh, family's all right, by the way. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, um, just a question regarding, obviously, with COVID-19 going on, if, say, per chance, the fall has to get, uh, you know, set back to maybe have to push back to an October, November, even next year start, what do you feel like would be a proficient amount of time for you guys to prepare uh, going into a season, even if the, if the school might be closed down in the summer? How do you feel that you would go across that? Yeah, I, I had a conversation with, with uh, Gene about that uh, the other day. Assuming we would start on time, and, and I don't know if that's an accurate deal, if we were in by July 13th, I think we could start practice on August 1st, you know, now take that back. However, you'd want to take it. If we end up starting the end of September, uh, that's the challenge uh, for everybody. And for our players is not knowing um, when that would be, you know, we may get a call and, and have a week before we come in or two weeks from a quarantine standpoint, but we have so many guys on our, on our staff that have such great experience. You know, I talked to Tui and, and Buddy, uh, and, and Van about this. When we played college ball from late 80s to, to around 90, everybody did stuff on their own in the summer anyway. And you better come in on August 1st and, and be ready to go. Now you had two days and sometimes three days to get yourself in shape, but um, you know, everybody was challenged. And so, uh, that's what we've kind of mentioned to our guys is just be ready when that time comes. Go ahead, Kellis. Hey, Chris, I got two for you here. First off, I kind of want to know, how much do you just personally miss right now? And then after that, can you tell me who are some of the guys you're really looking forward to seeing when things get going on both the offensive line and defensive line? Well, I just miss seeing the guys on a daily basis. You know, I'm not in on the position meetings uh, right now because I have so many other things to do. Uh, and, and so I don't get a chance to go through with Jay Ray and, and talk to the wide receivers or – um, with mess with the tight ends or Joe with the safeties. Uh, so I, I miss that camaraderie on a, on a daily uh, basis. Um, you know, offensive line, I, I was excited to see a bunch of guys, but I was really excited to see what Katori uh, could do. I know that he had put himself in a really good uh, position to get himself in, into shape. I'm excited to see what Noah uh, Johnson can do. Uh, Christian Duffy, there's a bunch of guys there. Ben Adler, who's who's been in, in the mix a little bit. So, and then on the defensive line, I was really pleased with uh, the progress, and he played a little bit last year uh, of what Eli Huggins has done. I, I think Eli is primed to have a, an exceptional season, and and uh, he and Drew Wiley, who played some last year behind uh, Trey and Mitty, I think are going to be uh, really good players for us. We'll go to uh, Dennis and then Scott Fritchin again. Hey, Chris, hope you're well. Um, I, I had a question, then a follow-up. Uh, you just touched on it. Um, do you think this season, the way things are going so far, might be a template for what you just referenced? You know, back in the day, students were just st sent home with a list of uh, things to accomplish. In other words, that, that it doesn't become an 11- or 12-month-a-year sport. You know, uh, it might become that. Uh, you know, guys – I talked to a lot of the guys in, in the NFL and, and um, you know, I talked to Carson Wentz just last week and, and it's like, you guys are fine. You're starting to understand that they have to do this on their own unless they have a, a professional trainer and they may have the money to do that in time. But in essence, you have to be your own boss 
uh, this time of year and get yourself in shape. Uh, I, I will be really interested to see, you know, assuming we start somewhat close to on time or even a few weeks uh, late, uh, the, the rate of injuries, the rate of pulls, the rate of, of hamstrings and those things, uh, because there is, you know, that out, out there with overtraining uh, 12 months out of the year. And, you know, obviously we are all bigger, faster, stronger, much bigger, faster, and stronger than the guys that, that on our staff that we were talking about when we came in in August. But um, grand scheme, I thought we were always healthier too. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, the data that comes back at the end of this year, whenever we play it, as far as the injuries, especially soft tissue. And also as a follow-up, you're one of the few guys in the country that have played 15 games in the season, in a season. Can you imagine playing two seasons in some form or fashion in a calendar year? Um, you know, you're, you're exactly right. It, I, we've played so much football and I've been involved in so much football over over the last decade that uh, I don't fear that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to play football and I know the guys do too. We'd love to have a traditional calendar season and we still are hopeful for a traditional calendar season. If we don't have a traditional calendar season, uh, it will be, it will stress those guys and it will stress the depth on teams. But uh, I believe if we end up having to play that non-traditional season, you're going to see a lot of players play, um, in that first half, so to speak, yeah. uh, see what they have for the next year. Cause you're going to utilize it for the fall of 2021 in, in essence. And I, I would just fear that as far as if a kid gets an ACL in February in game three, he's essentially missing two full seasons. And, and just real, real quick, you just popped something into my mind. What, what if you're a, a junior um, going into the draft or, and maybe a high rated, you know, senior, you've got a decision to make. Absolutely. And um, I, I don't know, yeah. unless they feel like they need to get film out there, uh, it all would depend on, on what those uh, NFL scouts and people are saying of where they project them at. Right. Thank you. You bet. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, Chris, I'm, I'm curious. I'm hearing stories about Kansas State football players using milk jugs uh, to lift weights with and PVC pipe and things like that. What can you say just about the strides of, of your kids to want to be able to work out, to want to be able to do do the right thing during this time when there's so much uncertainty out there. What kind of reports are you hearing about how they've been able to maintain as far as their conditioning goes? Hey, Scott, we're, we're all as coaches doing the same thing, using whatever we can to get a workout in too because we don't have that access. But I, I credit uh, Chris Dawson and our staff of reaching out to these guys uh, each week and finding out what they have and then designing a plan around that. Some guys are fortunate enough to have some weights. Some guys just have some bands. Some guys, to your point, maybe are doing it unconventionally with milk jugs or, or cement blocks, whatever it may be. And, and that's where, you know, I think Chris Dawson is as good as there is uh, in the country uh, of, of modifying whatever workout it, it is for a young man. And then, from a running standpoint, everybody has the ability to run. And there's, there's, in my mind, there's not an excuse to not have be in really good cardio shape because uh, that's something that everybody has the ability to do. How have you been able to get the message out to recruits, you know, to show them that K-State is unique, that they need to be a part of this, and that life is going to go on and they're going to have a home here? Well, that's, I, I believe that's where our staff has been the busiest. Um, you know, we're, we're limited in the amount of time and hours that we can be with our own players um, via Zoom meetings, uh, and, and we're checking up on them, you know, non-football related things. But our biggest emphasis is, is really on recruiting right now, simply because we lost the month of February because of that turning into a dead period this year. Uh, and, and so we had so many dates circled once we came back from spring break well we didn't get to come back from spring break and we had a bunch of junior days throughout the entire month of march and up until really the spring game uh, in mid-april we had a bunch of them so we're not able to have those so we're kind of bringing those junior days to those to those young men uh and you know we're sending things out and, and they're calling us and, and we're showing them things the best we can we're doing some facility uh virtual tours ourselves and 
Um, that's what we have to do because uh, we have great people at Kansas State. We have great facilities at Kansas State. and We have to be able to show those, and this is the perfect time for us to do it. Go to Karen and then Matt. Okay, two things. Hi, Coach Kleiman. How are you? Great, Karen. How are you? Terrific. I wanted to uh, ask you about recruiting. You talked about what you can show these young people, but through a screen like this, how can you read them to see if their personality, the way they go about things, is a perfect fit for your program? It's difficult. There's no question. Uh, but the more interaction and contact that we can have with those young, young men, I believe that shows us the interest. If we're struggling to have those guys get back in touch with us, um, probably not working out for us. The guys that, that I know that our staff are talking to have been really easy to reach. And um, whether it's through a text or something on social media, those kids are getting back to us, uh, showing us the, the, the interest. And uh, uh, I know our staff is doing a tremendous job, uh, you know, both sides of the ball of, of connecting with guys and, and building relationships because that's what recruiting is. It's building relationships. Everybody's got nice facilities. Unfortunately, nobody's seeing those facilities right now. So you better build a great relationship. And coach, you mentioned just a little bit ago about the milk jugs and stuff. What's the most creative thing you've heard on your team a player doing to work out? Oh, people, I can't remember who it was that was pushing a, uh, pushing a pickup truck in, in, in his back of uh, his yard. I can't remember who it was. I'd have to ask Coach Dawson, but just trying to work on some, some leg strength and leg squats and um, leg drive and pushing the truck. Okay. I didn't know if you had any guys who were on a farm or something trying to outrun a mule or something. You know, I wasn't <laughs> quite sure if you heard any kind of funny I haven't heard story. that one. No, I haven't heard that one. I'm sure there's out there, though. Thanks, Coach. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, Coach, we certainly don't know how long this will go on, but do you worry about, you know, the lack of evaluation periods? And then what kind of things can you do to replace some of that, that in person, whether it's at camps or whatnot, with seeing those kids? Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it will probably change the landscape for everybody. Uh, you know, we have a number of, whether it's us at satellite camps or having kids come to our, our campus, I think it'll be interesting to see based on when high school football ends up getting started. Uh, do we have to send more guys out uh, on, on a Friday night than we typically would, uh, whether you're home or away, just so that you can get an evaluation? Um, and, and maybe the NCAA will open some more things up. You know, maybe they'll allow some kids to visit in August, which they typically wouldn't, uh, and at least get around people. But, uh, you know, the evaluation tool, you have to, you're going to have to be really sharp on, on watching uh, video from a, a – a junior that you've liked, but you want to see senior film or wanted to see it at camp as a senior. Um, now we're going to have to go out and find those guys and, and watch their, watch a game. We'll go to Kurtz and then Ryan Black. Yeah, coaches, is, is there a position group you feel like is most affected or least affected by not having spring ball for you guys? Yeah, without question, the offensive line, just because we had so many new guys there uh, and, and they're a close close knit group of guys. And, and, uh, I know that, uh, you know, I, I look at Noah Johnson and, uh, Josh Rivas of two guys that are older, that are leaders that, are, that Josh has played some and Noah's just a tremendous leader of trying to connect all those guys together so that they're around each other more. Uh, cause that's, you know, whether it's on a zoom, just the offensive lineman watching something without coach Riley, uh, you have to, build cohesion there on, on that offensive line. And, and uh, uh, that's probably the biggest area. Okay, I can go on and go on, Kenny. Yep, Ryan, go ahead. Hey, uh, Chris, how you doing today? Good, Ryan. Uh, wait, I've got a couple of staffing-related uh, questions. I guess my first one would be, I know this is such an odd time for, for everybody, but how has it been getting to work with Steve again and, and maybe what he was able to do at all with the linebackers group before you guys had to break? Um, really nothing other than meeting a few, uh, at, on his interview, he was able to meet, uh, the older guys, uh, Eli J ball, um, and Fletch on his interview. Uh, it's been awesome being back with Steve. He and I have, uh, uh, worked together for a few years in, in a couple of those 15 game seasons where we're in the, uh, in the defensive staff room all the time. So he and I became really close. Um, and uh, I know he's excited about being here. 
Uh, he's going to add so much uh, to our defense. And I know that he's enjoyed being on the Zoom meetings and, and learning the personalities uh, with, of the linebackers because we have some unique personalities of, of a bunch of fun guys in there and a pretty talented group. Uh, so I, I'm excited for him. I wish he'd have gotten a chance to, to actually work with him uh, on, on the field, but uh, uh, that'll come in time. And then my, my follow-up would be, you know, I, I asked Joe the other day about just the hire itself, him getting promoted to def- defensive coordinator, and he said that he essentially had been auditioning to be a defensive coordinator for, for six years. So just how easy of a hire was that for you, just going ahead and promoting him to D.C.? Well, I, I've obviously been really close with Joe and watched him work with Coach Ince at North Dakota State for – uh, my five years there and then coming here and watching him interact with Scotty and uh, have that same kind of uh, voice. And uh, he's, he was, he was ready um, a, a couple of years ago for sure. But, but we had coach Ince that ended up being head coach at North Dakota State and then coming here learning another way of doing things from Scotty has helped him. And that's the one thing about, I so appreciate about Joe. He's not an ego guy. He wants to be a sponge. He wants to learn as much as he can. Uh, he wants to have other guys' input, uh, and I, I was excited for him because he deserved the opportunity. You know, he's he's been a part of an awful lot of national championships and, and coached an awful lot of football. And and you ask any of those safeties uh, about Joe in a meeting room, and there's not a more detailed, organized guy uh, on our staff as far as just putting the finer details together on a game plan and challenging guys, and so. I was pleased to, to have him be elevated to defensive coordinator. And then it's just been the world to me to have Van as the assistant head coach. Van has helped me uh, so much, and Van's going to be a, a college head coach uh, fairly soon. And uh, that was a great role for him and a great role for me to have him in because uh, I have so many things. I have so much respect for Van and been able to bounce so many things off of him. We'll go to Mitch and then Danny. Hey, Chris, uh, Mitch Sherman from The Athletic. How are you? Um, I wanted to ask you about um, characteristics that you learned of, of your, you, you know, that you, what kind of characteristics did you see from your team in the first year that, that you know, um, pleases you about how you think their ability is to, you know, roll through this kind of adversity or, or really any kind of adversity that they face? And then also, um, does this magnify at all? Uh, the situation we're in now, the importance of having those bowl practices? Well, the, uh, the thing I learned the most is, is we have great buy-in amongst our guys. And um, we developed a great relationship really fast with, with all of our team, all of our coaches did. And so I think there's a great trust there, us in them and them in us. Uh, and so I know that uh, that, is, that will help us through this time. Uh, the bowl practices – were very good to, to help, especially the young guys when we would go to just young guys kind of scrimmaging against each other. Uh, unfortunately, playing the opponent we did with Navy, we didn't get a chance to work every day on our base defense because you have to do something totally different to defend the option. And so that was probably not as, other than the fact that we were practicing, we weren't practicing what we are going to play for 12 weeks out of the season next year. Uh, but just the fact that those guys were getting the extra practices, I think, helped as well as the extra meetings. And uh, I'm excited because I, I know that uh, uh, with the seniors we have coming back, with the tremendous leadership that those guys have, and those guys are, and I always tell these guys, I've said it from the day I got here, you got to get invested in the program, um, and, and it's your program. And the more you're invested in the program, the more you're going to get out of it. And those guys uh, have taken the ownership that I've given them and during this time have reached out to uh, each other, reached out to a younger guy, reached out to somebody at a different position to help those guys through this. Thank you. Go ahead, Danny. Hey, Coach. My question is kind of a broad question, um, but I want to get your opinion from maybe a national perspective, but also from a college perspective, why you think it's important to have a football season this year. Well, it's kind of the fabric of our society. I, I would hate to imagine going through a fall and not driving by a high school stadium or, or having my son, who's going to be a junior at Manhattan High, getting ready for a high school practice and high school season because 
uh, that, that is, that is so much fun. And those kids, they don't know how many years they're playing in, in, in as a young player. And so I think it's so important for those guys to have that ability to compete and be on a team uh, from a younger, younger player's perspective. You know, when you look at the college and the, and the NFL, um, our, our world needs sports. They, they need every sport. And uh, football brings everybody together. Now, that may be unique this year if it does bring everybody together. But in the same respect, we have to find a way to play it, uh, I think, financially as much as anything, uh, because it, it will help every other sport and it'll help us and help our university uh, from the revenue standpoint. Uh, and I just know this, when my last game I played, I was a, a senior and man, I cried my eyes out when I fin finished up playing. I knew I wasn't playing at the next level. And I see all these seniors that we have that have aspirations and maybe they will get a chance to play at the next level to have things taken away uh, and maybe not play full 12 games or uh, whatever that may be. And all of a sudden they get it cut short. Uh, it's, it's, a game that's only played for so long and you only get so many opportunities every year. You only typically play 12 in 365 days. That's, uh, that's a tough pill to swallow if we can't have it. Thanks coach. You bet. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up with Kellis and then Arnie. Chris, do you think it'll be feasible at all for teams to start practicing before general students are allowed back on campus? <laughs> Yeah, I do. Uh, I think it probably is going to have to be that way. Um, and, and we may play in front of an empty stadium. I know that that doesn't want, nobody wants to have that happen. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if we are allowed to bring, I don't know, groups of 50 or less back, we could at least get a weight workout in and roll them in in, in groups. Um, and, uh, you know, based on all the testing and those things and those things that, that are not my area of expertise, um, we are very hopeful that um, we're able at some point being able to bring our players back and probably uh, before the general students can come back. Go ahead, Arnie. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the, the financial aspect of it earlier. I was curious with the uncertain times and just the loss of revenue and anything, have, have you had to make any budget adjustments or anything like that or is it pretty much business as usual in that respect no we're going to have to make some you know i, I we haven't been uh, pressed upon that we know we've received some things that said we are going to make some cuts but we have uh, we're still kind of going through all those scenarios of, of where we are going to make some cuts but i think once again we want to know what we're going to deal with um come fall and we don't want to do something in april that all of a sudden we say, oh, we didn't really have to do that. And I think that's the whole landscape of, of this uh, environment is I, I know that we have to have time to make decisions, uh, but I think it's too early to cancel anything or make that kind of drastic adjustment uh, on April 17th. Thanks. One, one more with Ryan Black. Hey, Chris. Yeah, it's just, this is the first time I've had a chance to talk to you uh, since this happened. So that's, or in a, in a way, it didn't happen. But I'm just very curious. So, you know, there are all these reports out there at the end of February that, that Chris Dawson had interviewed for Alabama's vacancy. And he obviously ended up staying here. But, you know, if he had left essentially the first week of March and then maybe 10 days later is, is when all this stuff happens with the pandemic. I mean, how costly would that have been to your program if you lose your strength and conditioning coach and now you guys are gone and, and they don't have any idea who the new program coordinator is going to be? Well, we don't have to worry about that, Ryan, because he's here. <laughs> yeah. And so there's no, nothing really to answer on it. And I'm so excited that Chris is with us and his staff, and, and he's, he's going to get opportunities. Like I said, I think he's the best in the country. He's going to get opportunities, but uh, – He's also very rooted into K-State football and loves our players and loves the community. So I'm happy he's staying. 